Shortly after his conversion, St. Augustine wrote these immortal words. Late have I loved you, O beauty ever ancient, ever new. Late have I loved you. You were within me, but I was outside. And it was there that I searched for you. In my unloveliness, I plunged into the lovely things that you created. You were with me, but I was not with you. Augustine, sincere but restless, had been searching for love and God. Eventually, he found them in the most unexpected of all places, inside of himself. God and love had been inside of him all along, but he hadn't been inside of himself. The spiritual writer Ronald Rollheiser says, we don't pray to make God present to us. God is already present, always present everywhere. We pray to make ourselves present to God. So the problem of presence is not with God, but with us. Sadly, this is also true for our presence to the richness of our own lives. Too often we're not present to the beauty, love, and grace that seems to brim over within the ordinary moments of our lives. The abundance is there, but we don't see it. Why? Well, because of our restlessness, our tiredness, our distraction, our anger, our obsession, our wounds, our haste, whatever. Too often we are not enough inside of ourselves to appreciate what the moments of our own lives hold. We think of our lives as impoverished or dull or small, not worth putting our full hearts into. But as with prayer, the fault of non-presence is on our side. Our lives come laden with richness, but we aren't sufficiently present to what is there. The November 1977 National Geographic contains an unusual collection of photographs. They're the work of one Jim Bladenberg, who set for himself the challenge that for 90 days between the fall equinox and the winter solstice, he would take only one photograph a day. Now, you have to realize, he's a professional photographer. He could have taken as much as 500 pictures a day and then chosen the best ones. But he chose to take just one photograph a day. That's a challenge. To break out of his routine pattern, which was to take many photographs, and to let go of life's clutter, just to focus, to focus so that he could perhaps just see the sun one day, or see what was on the next rise, or follow the tracks in the snow, just to break the numbness of his routine, the automatic, the frenetic approach to things. Basically, what he wanted to do was to be present, to focus, to contemplate. When we come to the gospel, we see Mary's ability to say yes to God's request happens because of her ability to be present to God, not only at this moment of the Annunciation, but during the ordinary moments of her daily life that have led up to this moment. She knows the greatness of God in everything. God is no stranger to her, but is a frequent guest in her daily life whom she joyfully welcomes into her home, her heart. 
The secret to prayer is not to try and make God present, but it's to make ourselves present to God. Like the young Augustine, we can wander away from ourselves. We become strangers to our own experience, looking outside of ourselves for something that, as I said before, is already inside us. The trick here is to come home to ourselves. God and the moment don't have to be searched out and found. They're already here. We need to be here. Home is where the heart is. In this season of Advent, I love to read a poem written by Sister Jessica Powers, and it's entitled Advent. And it speaks of living this season of waiting and taking on this quiet contemplation, which is in Mary's womb. It goes like this. I live my advent in the womb of Mary. I wait in merry darkness, faith's walled place, with hope's expectance of nativity. I knew for long she carried me and fed me, guarded and loved me, though I could not see. But only now, with inward jubilee, I come upon Earth's most amazing knowledge. Someone is hidden in this dark with me. May Mary, our helper forever, aid us during this final week of Advent before we fall into the madness of the season to be present to the love of God, hiding in the darkness and the emptiness of our lives, waiting to be born anew.